Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Once again this Christmas, we find ourselves in a challenging and serious situation with the latest coronavirus variant sweeping across the globe and now in our own neighborhood. Numbers that continue to set record infections since the pandemic was declared nearly two years ago. The Christmas message is one of hope and of God's love taking on human form in the Christ child. The one who calls us to love one another compels us to encourage you to stay close to your own family and circle of friends and to avoid gathering with those outside your regular circle. And so our churches are closed. Even if we were to have small gatherings for worship here in the cathedral, the singing of favorite Christmas carols would not be possible. Long before the church became the institution it is today, it was gatherings of the followers of Christ in small groups in homes that was the norm. So we are glad to have you join us from the safety and comfort of your own home, wherever you may be. This service, which you are about to witness, has been a tradition here at All Saints for about a dozen years. Readings and reflections are offered by young adults of our parish, retelling the stories in scripture from the beginning of creation to the birth of Jesus. These young people would also at the time of the Eucharist be the ones to share the bread and wine with those gathered, a very meaningful demonstration of God's call for all of us to care for and serve one another. I want to thank Mr. Bill Black for his guidance and hard work in bringing this service together and for our Bishop Sandra Fife for joining us. The reality of the pandemic was brought home to us as one member who would be a participant is recovering at home from a COVID exposure, and her video from home will be spliced into this service. Also want to say a big thank you for those who made angels to decorate the cathedral through Christmas. We had a group in yesterday to set them loose flying about and added hundreds of lights, so thank you. You'll find the complete text for this service on the Cathedral Church of All Saints website under the information tab, newsletters and bulletins. With a bit of skill, you can open the bulletin in one tab of your browser and this video in the other to follow along. We've included the hymn text so that while we can't sing here, we can picture you at home singing your heart out, perhaps with a candle lit on a table. Please feel free to share this service with others. And if you know of someone in need of contact from us here at the cathedral, please let us know. We'll also be posting our later service at 7 p.m. this evening with Bishop Sandra as our preacher and the Sunday service posted at 11.30 a.m. on the 26th of December. We'll let you know via our website and our Cathedral Happenings email service when in-person services can once again resume. Last Sunday here at the Cathedral Capella Regalis Men and Boys Choir, gave two performances of A Chorister's Christmas. It turns out these were the last Christmas carols to be sung in the cathedral and in churches around Nova Scotia, at least by choirs due to the recent wave of infections. The good news is that concert is available. It's been recorded and filmed and until December 27th at 11 p.m. Atlantic time, you can go online, purchase a ticket, tune in and be encouraged, uplifted by that beautiful music. So please spread the word. Although we have come together in person and in digital space today, we each stand on ground that is the ancestral territory of peoples who were here long before the European settlers crossed the ocean. We gather here in and from the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia, located on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. On this holy night, we join the circle of our wreath with the candles of hope, love, peace, and joy. May the light of their flames cast away all doubts and fears in us and affirm God's promises of old. 
tonight, we light our center candle as a sign that your promises have been fulfilled. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Tonight, we will celebrate the birth of Jesus, which transforms us and our world. May the light of this flame at the center of our wreath proclaim to one and all that Jesus has come to be at the center of our lives. Thanks be to God. God. Light in the midst, in the midst of, of us, center, center of our story, give, give us the courage to share your message, message of hope, to live your example of love, to strive for peace within ourselves and our world, and to celebrate with joy the glory of this Christmas. Amen.
eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. As we have known the revelation of that light on earth, bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by, by his holy child, Jesus. And let us make this place glad with carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, for our forgiveness and our ability to forgive others and especially for this country and this municipality of Halifax. And because he loves them, let us remember in his name those who are poor and helpless, those who are cold, hungry, or oppressed, those who are sick, and those who mourn, those who feel lonely or unloved, the aged, and little children, as well as those who do not know the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. Amen. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility, flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. Let us choose love during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other. Let us yet find ways to be loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. God bless us with his grace, forgive us of our sins, fill our hearts with peace. Christ, give us the joy of everlasting life, and to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. In the day that the Lord God made the heaven and the earth, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. 
I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to all the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not yet found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. O oh God, in creating man and woman, you infused us with the very breath of your spirit. In the wonder of your breathtaking creation of all that is, seen and unseen, galaxies, stars, suns, and this precious earth, we stand in humbled awe. Help us open ourselves to you more and more until we blossom into the fullness of your image. Let all the earth and the heavens above rejoice us this night in thanksgiving for your eternal love. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she is received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, 
and the rough places a plain. Then the Lord God shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The glass, grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Isaiah offers words of comfort to a nation overcome with despair, dreams lost, life scattered, futures clouded with uncertainty. They find themselves like aimless wanderers in desert places. No one hears, no one cares. What does my life matter? But as the darkness seems deepest before the dawn, so our God journeys with us through, his, through our times of trial to the edge of new horizons. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shale or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on your ancestral house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. Yeah. 
we can communicate without moving our lips, unseen with people around the globe. In instant messages, we tweet, text, TikTok, Tumblr, Instagram, and Snapchat. Yet, we are still so deaf to your attempts to speak to us in all the ways God might have confronted us, forcing us to sit up and take notice you choose to speak one word, Emmanuel, a word which says, I am with you, around you, within you, always and forever. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. 
Then the angel departed from her. Why, Mary, um, a young woman of no account, no good family status, no fine home in the suburbs, no designer gowns or sequined sandals, yet God chose her to help change the world. Here am I, the servant of the Lord, says Mary. Is that what it takes to give birth to possibilities beyond our wildest imagining? What might happen if we, like Mary, voice those words, God, let it be with me according to your word. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Eucrinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Emperor Augustus was busy counting heads. 
There is money to be made in taxing every man and woman in my kingdom, he was thinking. God was busy looking beyond the numbers. God saw names with faces, with stories and histories and relationships. And so God came to be with the people, not to extract a tax, but to offer a gift, to feed us with the abundance of his love. To a town called Bethlehem he came, which in the Hebrew language means the house of bread. I am the bread of life. Jesus would one day tell his friends, those who believe in me will never be hungry. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before him, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those with whom. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of Christ.
O wondrous and most gracious God, on this holy night, bless this nativity scene. As we gaze upon your holy family, let us pray for all families, those we know and those we do not, those who live on the other side of the world and those who live on the other side of the street. Help us recognize and celebrate the great diversity of your human family, for love of whom you entered our world as an innocent child. O Emmanuel, God who is with us always, may our hearts be filled with your love, inspired with hope, embrace your peace, and proclaim your joy, now and forever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. On this night, we celebrate in word and music the great gift of your Son, Emmanuel, the God that comes to us, the God that dwells with us, the one who lightens the darkness of this world. By his example of love, may we be guided by his generosity of spirit. May we be moved to be generous to one another. By his call for peace and unity to all peoples, may we be challenged. Bless now these gifts which we offer 
even as you have so graciously gifted us. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Holy God, the beginning and end of all creation, we lift up our hearts this night to give you thanks and praise. You willed all things into being. You established the foundations of the earth, seas and dry lands, mountain peaks and valleys deep. You pierced the dark dome of heaven with your eternal light, suns and stars beyond numbering. You breathed your spirit upon this sacred sphere and filled it with a myriad of life, dependent upon one another and upon you for survival. And you deemed it all to be good. With your heavenly hosts who proclaim your glory, we now join our voices. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh God, when the time was ripe, you once more gifted us with the wonder of your creativity. Nurtured in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit, you came to us in the innocence and vulnerability of a child. Cradled by lowly beasts, kept warm by their presence, and guarded by the compassion of Joseph, you fulfilled this night the promises you had made known through the prophets of old. Human as we are, you came, willing to risk being dependent upon our human care and love. Humble, gentle, and unassuming was his coming, yet kings were moved to seek him, while other rulers were troubled by the news of his birth. On this holy night, we rejoice in this child in whom the fullness of your love was manifest, the very word of God made flesh, full of grace and truth, born to deliver us from our sins, and redeem us from the powers of evil and terminal death. To save us from ourselves, you chose to come down from heaven as one of us. As he grew among us, Jesus showed in loving those often unnoticed and forgotten by this world, the power that lies within us to transform life. Jesus took his message even to the cross where he would die, proclaiming in his great sacrifice the power of unconditional forgiveness. Yet death could not silence your word and in rising again, he took his place at your right hand, proclaiming justice and peace shall know no bounds. Your greatest gift to us, O oh God, came wrapped in swaddling clothes.
Rejoicing in all you have done for us, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy God, as you once visited us in the birth of Jesus, come and visit us now in this place, in this moment. By the power of your spirit, sanctify this bread and wine, your heavenly banquet shared with us, transforming them into the body and blood of our Christ. We gather together no longer as strangers on this night, but as your family. We remember how Jesus with his friends took bread, blessed and broke it, and shared it among them saying, take and eat. This is my body offered for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus raised a cup of wine, blessed it, shared it one to another saying, drink this all of you. My blood is poured out for you and for all humankind for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance, rem remembrance of me. O blessed God, Emmanuel, by your birth amongst us, heaven and earth are drawn together in harmony. Renew us in this Eucharist, so this weary world may once again rejoice in your eternal gift of love. Illuminate our hearts and minds this night with the light that shone down on Bethlehem, dispelling all that darkens our, li our lives and shadows us from you. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, source of all life, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul, since I cannot receive you now in the sacrament of your body and blood. Come now spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And we pray this with all who are unable to be physically present with us this night, knowing that we and Christ are spiritually present with you.
Let us pray. Father of all, tonight you have united earth and heaven in sending your Son to take our human nature. May we who have tasted heavenly things share in the life of his eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this night and remain with you always. Amen. Depart in peace and take with you the certain knowledge that God is always coming into the world. We will seek God, not simply in a long ago stable or ancient manger, but in the people we meet and the depths of our own hearts. May the blessing of Christmas make you a blessing to others. May the peace of this season live in all that we do. Welcome the challenge to live and speak God's message. We will offer ourselves as God's voices. 